students. Uh, tonight we just finished um, our lesson called Plugging Into the Power of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to go over that with you guys who missed it tonight to kind of give you some instruction on getting plugged in uh, like you need to. Uh, I didn't have as much time as I wanted to tonight to go even deeper, so we may continue this over to next Wednesday night because the Holy Spirit is something that most people uh, just don't know how to or have forgotten how to or just simply don't know uh, Christ in general to even have the Holy Spirit speak to them, to plug into them, uh, so they don't recognize who he is. But um, the greatest thing about Scripture is that it commands us to live uh, life through the power and help of the Holy Spirit. And so all believers must be filled with the Holy Spirit and be empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we're going to kick this off and hopefully get you guys uh, fuller with him and plugged in. First off, I want to talk to you about things that um, inject power into your life, like um, a pen, a hammer, a cell phone, a remote control to a TV, um, a lighter. Uh, there's so many different things that uh, require uh, human action to get them to work. If not, they just lay there and do nothing. And so my biggest encouragement for you tonight is to uh, look at these things that you see in your house or in your car or wherever you may be. Uh, just look at that object and say, okay, how does this thing have power? It has power because mankind uh, is needed to generate that power. And that's much like the Holy Spirit is in our life, that if we don't plug into him, if we don't use him, then basically we're just letting him sit there and do nothing. Uh, so I pray that you do not treat him that way that you get plugged into him and don't just use him as an inanimate object because right now I'm looking at my uh, Ozark Trails cup and it's just sitting there doing nothing. Now it has tea in it because I love sweet tea, but the cup can't do anything until I pick it up and interact with it. So the Holy Spirit is a lot like that. You can receive Christ, have the Holy Spirit in you, uh, but unless you do something with it, it just sits there. So let's, uh, let's dig in and see what God's Word says about the Holy Spirit. You know, we even think about um, the ways that the standards of a Christian life are impossibly too high. Uh, if you've ever felt like uh, you cannot do all the right things, say all the right prayers, and spread the gospel to your friends like you want to, or adequately live a godly life and represent your Heavenly Father well, <laughs> you're right. Uh, in fact, uh, only one person has ever succeeded as that, and that's the perfect Christian, which is Christ. Uh, so the wonderful news is that he's left us with the very presence of the Spirit who dwells inside you. If you have Christ in your life, uh, that's what you have. Uh, so we're going to read in uh, John, and we're going to kind of describe to you uh, who he is in John 14, 16 through 18. And it says, I will ask the Father... And he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and it doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives within you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. So he describes how the Holy Spirit is to uh, come to you. The, you know, the horrible thing is, is that we're not out here looking for him like we should, uh, when in reality, the Holy Spirit is the one seeking us out. Uh, you know, every time we have a student get saved or an adult get saved in church or outside of church, wherever anybody receives salvation, it is because of the Holy Spirit seeking them out. Because most of the time, we're too busy looking at the world. Okay, we're looking at the things around us, we're looking at the things that distract us, and the last thing we're thinking about is the Holy Spirit. So I hope that when we get through with this, that that is the focus of your time in the morning when you get up where you say, God, I just need the Holy Spirit to lead me today. Okay, take control of my life. Show me which direction I need to go. Because Jesus specifically tells us that he has asked the Father to help us out and be our advocate. The Holy Spirit is the answer to, to any request. Um, he lives inside us, teaches us, and continues to remind us of what Jesus said. So take these verses from John and go out and use them and apply them to your life and see how that goes. And if you've never cried out 
for comfort from the Holy Spirit in a time of need, then the greatest resource you have available to you at all times is, is not being fully tapped into. We don't use him like we should, so tap into that guy. He's ready for you know, and, and it's important that we take a few minutes to talk about how we can have a real relationship with the Holy Spirit. When you think about other relationships that you have on this planet, no matter who they are with, they did not happen completely automatically. Okay, everybody I come in contact with, I have to do something with them, and that is engaging with them. I have to acknowledge their existence and admit that they are there, because the very first thing that must happen is that we have to acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is living and is real. Now, maybe that seems like a no-brainer, but there are plenty of people, even Christians, who never spend any time thinking about the Holy Spirit. And when you see someone new, you want to meet them. You want to go out and talk to them, unless uh, we kind of describe a recluse lifestyle here tonight. Uh, you know, we should actually be hungering and thirsting for an authentic intimacy with him so we can go out and tell people what we have with him, how we have this comfort with him. You know, and the question I have for you is, have you ever asked God to make you excited about his word, about a time of prayer, or about spreading his love to others? That's when you have to tap into that Holy Spirit because we have to tap into the Holy Spirit before we can go out and share the gospel. Uh, because if we go out without him, uh, he can't minister to these people uh, that we're trying to reach or minister to us as well. So uh, again, remember that you would, what you would do if you meet someone and really wanted to know them better, you would acknowledge them, you would go after them and try to get to know everything there is about them. Because all your immediate friends in your life, your girlfriends, boyfriends, family, parents, whatever, you long to have a relationship with them, so you have to acknowledge that they exist first. Next thing I want to take you to is over to Galatians 5.22. Uh, so you're just going to flip a little bit farther over. I want to flip with you because uh, we're going to look at what uh, it says about the fruit of the Spirit. Now I know hopefully you've heard this term before. If not, you're hearing it for the first time tonight. So Galatians 5. 22, uh, we're going to go and it says, got to flip the page, it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, you can go on to 23, gentleness and self-control, there is no law against these things, okay, so when you look at these things that the Holy Spirit produces, it's the fruit of your life, and when I look at uh, the things that God desires, everything that God desires for us is really a revolved around the first one, love, okay? Love brings us joy, love brings us peace, love brings us patience, love brings us kindness, it brings goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, we have to really focus on the love that the Holy Spirit produces, uh, especially when we go out and share the gospel with people. And you're gonna run into some rude people, you're gonna run into some people who are gonna slam the door in your face, and the love that you show to them lets them know that you actually care about where their eternity is at. And they still may slam the door in your face, but at least you were producing the fruit of the Spirit, which is the command of the go out and spread the gospel to people. You know, and even talking about the fruit of the Spirit, I want you to think about um, what stands out to you about the list of things introduced in the fruit of the Spirit. And take the time to look at those in your life and see where you need to work on some things. And then what are some specific examples for what kind of fruit uh, might look like in your day-to-day -day life for the average teenager uh, at school or at home or your youth group or so on. And then how do you personally know you will need the Spirit's help to produce this kind of fruit in your life? Because I can tell you what, I've been the hateful teenager. I've been the one that showed no joy, no kindness, no self-control. Uh, it still carries over into your adult life. But... The bottom line for us tonight is that Paul explained there are two things we must do to experience the power that we have that absolutely should not be hidden and should never again be underutilized by us. We need to be filled with the Spirit. And, you know, in, in Ephesians 5, 18, it talks about these things. And we're going to flip over to that. It helps if you flip the right direction. I like doing this live in front of you because it lets you know that um, even from time to time, I gotta go looking for things. Uh, so Ephesians 5, 18. Do not be drunk with wine because you will 
ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, it gave you one worldly example of things that can control your life and just run your life downhill. We have to be filled, filled with the Spirit that uh, God has given us. When, when Jesus ascended into heaven, he promised that he was going to be sending a helper to us. How much do you love the fact that whenever you pray to God and you just don't know what to say, you have the Spirit that comes to God for you. He groans for you. He goes in your behalf. Because a lot of times... You can need to pray for something, but you just do not know what to say to God. You do not know how to uh, get your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions across to Him. That's where you just simply go and say, Holy Spirit, I need you. I need your directions. If you will go to God on my behalf and help me. Uh, most of all tonight, I want to talk to you before we close out of here and say, do you know Christ as your personal Savior? Because if the Holy Spirit is nagging at you to follow Him, um, you don't want to miss Him. You don't want to ignore that knock at the door too much. Uh, so I urge you tonight, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, it's easy. There, I explained tonight to him that there's not this actual magic prayer that some people believe to get saved in this Bible. It gives you direction on how to do it, and that's simply to believe, repent, and be baptized. So you have to acknowledge to God that you believe in him, you believe in Jesus, you believe what he did on the cross, you believe that he died for your sins, you believe that you are a sinner, and that you need him in your life. You have to explain to him that you want to repent and turn away from your sin. Doesn't mean you're not going to sin again. It just you want him to cleanse you and make you clean. You want him to be the Lord of your life and live with you. So I urge you tonight, if you do not have Christ as your Savior, please, I'll send you verses. I'll do whatever. Email us. Uh, send us a message on Facebook. Do whatever. Go find your uh, pastor you know. Uh, I can get you plugged in somewhere to get you some help. Um, I don't like doing it over the phone text message wise, but... You know what? I had one tonight. Reach out to me text message wise to get saved. And that's what I did. Uh, because I don't know that I have the luxury to wait until Sunday or tomorrow or whenever. So get it nailed down. Get that spirit. Get plugged into it. Start using it every day. Start your morning prayers off with Holy Spirit. I need your direction. I need your guidance today. Okay? Love you guys. See you